Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible because I've been unwell for a little while, but I'm still unwell and this is kind of time sensitive. We're going to be discussing everything you need to know for the Young Professionals Scheme and how to apply for it. Because this scheme can help you move to the UK with no job and live and work in the UK for two years. It's incredible. And we can also discuss all the mistakes people made the last time round so you can be extremely careful and not make those mistakes. I'm Ashika. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let's dive in. So last year was the first time the Young Professional Scheme was launched. So naturally, a lot of confusion, but we also learnt a lot because of that. The process is really simple and people honestly tend to overcomplicate it. I understand it's also because there's a lot of tension when it comes to applying for this. So now the first thing you need to do is check if you are eligible and we will discuss the eligibility criteria next. If you are eligible, you can enter the ballot or the lucky draw. If you're successful in the ballot, you will receive an email sharing all the details on how to apply. After that, all you need to do is get your documents ready and just apply online. That's it. Now the ballot opens on the 20th of February at 2.30 p.m. IST or Indian Standard Time and it will close at 2.30 p.m. IST on the 22nd of Feb 2024. And you will be able to apply from this page. The link will not be available before that. This is really important now. What we learned the last time was that when the ballot opens, the systems will get slow and they'll crash because hundreds of thousands of people will probably be applying at the same time. The last time, the system had errors and issues and it wasn't letting people complete the process and apply. There was also a queue of about one and a half to two hours just to reach the application page. SMSs were not going out and all of this got resolved within a few hours. So be smart. Don't try and apply immediately when it opens up. Instead, wait for a couple of hours. And remember, it is a ballot or a lucky draw, so it's not first come, first serve. So you don't have to worry and remember you have two days to apply so you do not need to rush it. What also happens is that whenever there are issues that pop up it usually takes the IT teams a couple of hours to sort it out. So let those few hours go by, let all the issues pop up and then apply. Now preferably apply in the evening or the night of the 20th so the load on the servers lightens. Now let's quickly discuss the eligibility. Of course, you need to be an Indian national or a citizen between 18 and 30 years old because this is only for Indian nationals. And you also need to be at least 18 years when you do travel to the UK. You need to have at least a bachelor's degree. Now this could also be your graduate diploma and if you click here, you'll find a lot more information on eligible degrees. You would also need to have 2,513 savings to support yourself in the UK. Now as of today, that's 2,63,548. And this money would need to be in your account for 28 days within 31 days of applying for your visa. And you will have to show bank statements as proof of this money being in your account when you apply. You also should not have any children who are under 18 years who live with you or who you are financially responsible for. Something you need to understand, and again, this is very, very important. When you enter the ballot, it will ask you to fill out a form. And it's very simple. It will ask you for your name, your date of birth, your passport details, scanned copies of your passport, your phone number and your email ID. You do not require to show anything else. So the education that I spoke about or the bank balance that I spoke about, none of that is required to be shown at this step. Please do not get confused. If you are selected in the ballot, if you're lucky and if your name is picked, you will then get an email asking you to send all of those details. So let's talk about what went wrong at this step last year. Now, despite this being very simple, many people got confused last year and made multiple mistakes at this step. Now, the first thing, you know your name. Make sure you fill out your name correctly. A lot of people misspelled their names the last time. It would need to match what is written in your passport. So if you do not have a surname, enter your first name as your surname and don't leave it blank. Now, when it comes to your passport, get copies of your passport showing the front and the back in one document and get this in advance. Save it as a PDF file and as a PNG file and label it with your name followed by your passport number. Next, make sure you enter the right phone number because if your phone number is not right, you will not get the OTP to verify your application and then you will not be able to apply. So double check your phone number. 
The same goes for your email ID. Make sure 100% that your email ID is accurate. The last time a lot of people were not able to complete the application form because either their email ID or their phone number was wrong and they wouldn't get the OTP because of that. Now, if this happens to you, create a new account with a different email ID or phone number and then try again. And after the ballot has been closed, the results will be out in two weeks and the successful applicants will receive emails on how to proceed. The last time round, the results were out before two weeks. So remember to keep checking your email, including your spam folder. This year, there are 3000 slots available. If you see how it was last year, all of the slots were opened in the first ballot, which was in Feb. And the balance of those slots, which were either not used or because people didn't apply or they didn't apply correctly, only those slots were opened up for the August ballot. So in terms of your odds, the ballot that is the best time for you to apply and because you have a higher possibility of getting through is the February ballot. So this ballot is really, really important. Now the ballot is free to enter and you do not have to pay any money to enter the ballot. If you are selected in the ballot, you would have to pay the visa application fees of 298 pounds or approximately 31,000 rupees. Now, if you are successful, you have around 90 days from the date of the email to apply for your visa. For you to apply for your visa, these are the documents that you would require. Your passport. Next, you need to show evidence that you have 2,530 pounds in your bank account. You need to show evidence of your educational qualifications. And it needs to be evidence that you completed your studies and that you graduated with the required qualifications. Please remember, if your documents are not in English, they would need to be translated. You also need to do a TB test and you will need a police clearance certificate. Now, what I would suggest is that you get the crucial things taken care of in advance. For instance, if you feel it's going to be a challenge for you to move the money or get the money, make arrangements in advance. You have 90 days after you've received your email to apply but from what I saw from the past two times, people were still facing issues very close to the date. And even though they were successful, they weren't able to show that they had the money in the account and then they couldn't apply. Next, if you are due to finish your graduation course very close to the dates mentioned, you need to discuss this with your university or your college to see if you can get the certificates earlier or attested documents from your college proving that you've graduated. Depending on how long you expect the police clearance certificate to take for your area, whether they're faster or slower, I'm not sure, but you may want to just apply for this in advance and keep it. Especially with it being an election year, there's a lot going on, so it might just take longer than you expect. And if you are successful in the ballot and you successfully apply for your visa online after that, you may need to visit a visa application center to provide your biometrics. After you do this, it will take around three weeks for the results of your visa to come through. And if everything goes well, you're ready to move to the UK. Now, I'll answer some of the questions I got the last time round to try and help clarify any questions that you might have. You can apply through a mobile, although I would suggest you apply through a laptop if you can, so that you don't make any mistakes. If you were successful in the last ballot, but you didn't apply for the visa, you should still be able to apply. So give it a shot. If you are on a student visa in the UK, you can apply. If you're working in the UK, you can apply. You cannot transfer a successful ballot between applicants, which means if your friend was successful in the ballot and you were not, you cannot apply using their successful email. If you are not successful, you should still receive an email saying you weren't successful this time and to try the next time. If your passport is expiring in the next few months, it's unlikely that your visa application will be accepted. If you don't receive an OTP, despite your phone number being correct, create a new account and apply with a new phone number that could be just an issue with your network. If you don't have a surname, please use your first name like I mentioned earlier. If you fill out inaccurate details and are selected in the ballot, your visa will most likely be rejected when you apply for the visa and you will not get your visa application fees back. So please be really careful when you apply. Please remember to upload the front and the back of your passport, which is why I said so that you don't forget, try and ensure that they're both in one document. Now, once you've submitted your application, you will not be able to make any changes. So do not be in a rush. Do not panic. Do not hurry. You will not believe how many people entered their names wrong or their date of birth wrong simply because they were stressed. Once you've made the mistake and you've submitted the application, you will not be able to change it 
so be extremely careful and probably have somebody seated beside you while you fill this out so you don't make mistakes on this visa no you cannot take any dependents along with you and once you're done with your 2 years on this visa you can convert it into a work visa if you get a sponsored job now in the worst scenario where you've made some mistakes in any of your documents create a new account and apply again with a different phone number and email id there's no guarantee it will work but it's worth a shot now the last time round i made a guided video of what the application process looks like because i was applying for a friend If you watch the video it will give you an idea of what the application form looks like. I suggest you watch it, prepare yourself for what you will need to do when the ballot opens. In the meantime, if you have any questions, drop me a comment below. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'm feeling a lot better the next time. And more importantly, all the best.